Bill Padley on TRE, Talk Radio Europe. 11.29. It must have been about three years ago now we last spoke to our next guest. Him and his dad, Derek, had a brilliant idea that rather than just moaning about various uh, lyrics in pop songs, he would actually take uh, the people to task uh, by writing them letters, a pop star from the 70s and 80s, uh, but didn't expect to get any replies back. And he did indeed get many, many replies back. And I'm delighted to welcome back to the show Dave Dawson. Good morning, Dave. Hello again, Bill. Three years on. I know. It's like, it's like half a life sentence, mate. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you can't keep a good idea down. You right. can't. So for those who, who maybe missed our first interview, when we spoke three years ago, this was basically an idea that you had um, uh, to, to write to pop stars, many from the kind of 70s and 80s, wasn't it? Yeah, yes. So we, we, we tend to go to, to, go, to go to iconic pop stars whose sort of songs are in our consciousness that we've been listening to for the, for the past 40 years, you know. So yeah. So that are ingrained in us that we all love, you know. Absolutely. That's how we do it, yeah. Rather than some of the fly-by nights that one could uh, write to these days. Well, we, we like to write to people that can write back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bill, love start, it, wasn't. love it, love it. So they did write back, and um, just to, to, to kind of catch up on where you were before, how did you write to them? I mean, finding the email, you know, the the the, the address to write to Nick Kershaw is not going to be that easy. No, what, what what we what we initially did was we went through management, and obviously that didn't go very well. <laughs> I bet <laughs> so it didn't. Saying, you know, who are you to ask these questions? We go, well, just a couple of guys. Well, mm. line dead. Um, so mm. the, how we did it was. Um, we wrote these letters, we kept them on this website, just hanging in cyberspace for a couple of years, yeah, Bill. And yeah. then we built up this fantastic, massive Facebook community. Yeah. And, we, and after a couple of years, we were getting people say to us, well, you know, um, someone to say, you do know my friend drives his three of us. Brilliant. Well, you do know my friend cuts his hair, do you? So we just bypassed management, got right through the back door and uh, got mm. directly in touch with the artist. So Absolutely it love right it. maverick way of doing it, quite punk. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Very, very punk. Uh, and were they actually letter letters or were they emails? Um, well, some... Um, so, do you remember a record called, called It's Immaterial? They had um, they did a song called Driving Away from Home. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, with them and a few others said we we refused to enter we refused to enter into any dialogue unless we received a handwritten letter delivered to our home address. <laughs> um, <laughs> others said we must have an email. Others said we, you know it, it, it was all different with every artist. Yeah, um, I can't imagine many pop stars giving you their home address. Uh, I've got a few. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not for sale. No, that's your next book, <laughs> potstarshomeaddresses.com. Yeah, fantastic. So we have got a few, because obviously once they're in the book, they wanted a copy, so... Yeah. Um... Yeah, oh, yeah, love it. That's I love it. We're, we're to be trusted. And yeah. the whole thing w was, you know, it was a bit of fun and it was done very tongue in cheek. And and I'm delighted to say that it kind of proved that the music business does have a sense of humour. At least the people who matter, you know, the kind of people who've made it in the music business. And as you say, who have, have had songs out that have endured for years, they've got a sense of humour about themselves, which is great. Oh, that's, that's true. We had a book launch a couple of weeks ago and uh, we had the Ruts there and Owen Paul was there. And, uh, wow, actually... old chum of mine. Yeah, oh, he's great. He loves he's it. fantastic. We love him too. In um, fact, you know what? Owen Paul's brother is an up-and-coming superstar, so there's a bit of a tip for you. Oh, I'll speak to him later. I'll, I'll mm. check out. Yeah, mm. I'll speak to him quite a bit. But we had... Do, do you remember Rupert Hine? Of course. Rupert Hine was a very famous producer um, who um, produced many great pop records, but uh, and, and at one point, and you may not know this, um, went out with Stevie Nicks. I did not know that. There we are. And he formed a band who had a hit with a song called Lone Ranger. Well, that's why he was there. Wow. Uh, because we got a reply from him. And what he said was, he said, we love this project because every pop star has got a little devious, humorous side that they like to keep hidden. So you're, you're giving us this opportunity to let that little bit of us run, run free. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I love that. It's, it's really nice. And like, like he and all the pop stars say, like, with this thing... It, nobody loses, everybody wins. I mean, it, it, it lets you like your artists a little bit more because you can it does. see that they like having a dig at themselves. And yeah. it makes them totally human, absolutely right, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, And so right. what, for those who are not familiar because they didn't, maybe didn't hear us before, what kind of things do you put in the letter? Have you got, like, an example of, of a couple you could maybe give us? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, we said... <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get a reply for this one, right? <laughs> But we, we we wrote to Keith West. 
Oh, as in excerpt from a teenage opera, Grocer yeah, Jack, Grocer him, Jack. Yeah. Yeah, we said, please forgive us for stating that the uh, the minor chorus ensemble goading this weak-hearted and and uh, respiratory, respiratorily suffering Grocer Jack to get <laughs> off his back and go into town. Okay, it's not really on. Why can't they just ordered through a uh, Ocado online for heaven's sake? <laughs> and, and we. And we <laughs> So it's little, th- and, and Belinda Carlisle, we said, dear Miss Carlisle, are you sure you didn't mean Devon? Oh, and, uh, <laughs> as in Devon's is a place on earth. Oh, that is fantastic. Yeah, it was stuff like that. So we didn't get replies to all of them, but we've got a decent hundred here. That is and, great. Uh, I know, it's I don't know how he got away with it, Bill. I know. One of the interesting things, of course, which which, um, which could have scuppered this whole project is that pop stars don't necessarily have anything to do with the song. They just happen to sing it. So they could say, actually, mate, nothing to do with me, and Belinda Carlisle being a good case in point. Well, what we what we did, Bill, was we, we researched extensively before we made our approaches. So we wanted to make sure I'd, I'd, I'd look at the lineup of the bands and see what who was the original guy that wrote the song. Right. Uh, but sometimes we have a bit of fun. We were, I mean, Peter Noonan's in the book, and he's fantastic. Really, um, from Herman's Hermits. Yeah, we've got him. He's amazing, um, <laughs> and, he's, he's, and he, he retweets us a lot. And what we say is that we know you didn't write it, but you, you're guilty by association, and you're, you're an accessory after the fact for recording it. Fair so enough. we did that with Ches. We we did that with Chesney Hawks. Of because course, because, we... because the one and only, which was his one and only hit. In fact, I was talking about Chesney only yesterday. He's actually also a good mate of mine, but it's extraordinary how he's sustained this career on the telly. He was on yesterday in some antique show, having had one hit all those years ago. He didn't even write. I know, and you can clearly hear Nick Kershaw doing the BVs on that. Absolutely, well. because he wrote it. Absolutely right. Yeah, so we, so we know you didn't write it, but you are still an accessory after the fact. Love it. Absolutely love it. So, um, exciting news. You wrote to me um, at the end of last year and were basically saying, you know, that you were, things were taking on a kind of new life with this uh, and you kind of revisited it and got some crowdfunding. So what happened then? Well, we got the first book out through crowdfunding because a lot of publishers didn't want to touch it because they just thought it was a little bit, um, I don't know. I mean, one publisher said, you know, you, you've said uh, to Iggy Pop, um, you can't be his, he can't be your dog because you can't get him through customs <laughs> because of the uh, years of excess and the vet bills. And they said, you can't really write that. So we, used to, so we, we just crowdfunded it and did it ourselves. That's but great. That, I know, but so we raised 18 grand for the first wow. book, and then that brought us to the attention of this amazing publisher called Unbound. Yep. And uh, I don't know if you've heard of them, Bill, they're mm-hmm. quite famous. Yep. Um, well, Unbound are quite fussy. They take on, they like to take on pub, they like to take on authors that maybe have got, you know, very, very clever ideas that maybe couldn't get published conventionally. And uh, they've got a trade edition through Penguin, and they took us on. Um, Brilliant. So it was really, really nice to be recognised externally. But I still wanted to keep it quite indie-ish. I didn't want to go for a major because yeah. we wanted... Because you've got a little Facebook community and they've got other the responses, I, me and Dad want this to be quite cottagey still, you know. We don't want it to get massive because we don't want to lose the essence of it. We like to we like to keep it quite sort of grassroots if we, uh, you know, so if we can. Good, good for so, you. So we got this new book through Unbound and um, we're delighted with it. Absolutely delighted with it. So you, you've yeah. been continuing to write and you've added some of the new stuff in there then, basically? Yeah, I, mean, I was to you three years ago. You said, will there be another book? And I said, well, I don't know if we could... Mm. You know, but we had so much old material where we could just revisit these people and say, look, I know you weren't interested seven or eight years ago, but yeah. you're a bit, we, you know, we're a bit more fine. And th- they knew that, that they were in safe hands because they'd seen the success of the first one. Yes. And it was really nice writing to people like Junior... And Ugh. saying, you know, and saying, look, Junie, we do this. We and, and we get halfway through the message, and he just come back through his Facebook and said, look, I'll stop you there. We know who you are. You're notorious. Oh, uh, you know? so you're so, scuppered now. You can't do it too often. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all the pop stars talk. It's like Stella Street. They all talk to each other, but I didn't really realise that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They're all, they're all connected. So, so Nick would say to somebody else, look, if you do get a letter from Derek and Dave, it's a bit of fun. Don't ignore it. It's going to be fine. How you know? brilliant. And then, and then we were getting the pop stars referring each other. <laughs> so it became really, really easy. <laughs> 
That's great. I love that. The whole thing makes me smile because it just, it just, I know a lot of these people that you're talking about and it's, and it's great that they just t- don't take themselves too seriously. And that's what's wrong with the music business these days. They take themselves so seriously. Can you imagine getting Kanye West to answer one of your letters? It's just not going to happen, is it? It's not going to happen, is it? No, it's not. There, there's some great quotes. Uh, I'll read a couple of them out here for, uh, for the benefit of our listeners. Um, Glenn Gregory, nice man from Heaven 17. I pass your letter on to my lawyer. A restraining order will shortly be in place. Let that be the end of it. What wonderful madness, which I love. And uh, a guy, um, again, a, a chum of mine, Bruce Woolley, who um, was one of the main writers of Video Killed the Radio Star. Yeah. And was in the buggles. Uh, Dear Team Philpot, your book is going to change my life. I shall probably never work again. <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> yeah, I love Bruce. Oh. He was in a band called Camera Club. And he was. was. What a band. Fantastic. Very, oh. very out there man, Bruce. And uh, his original version of Video Killed the Radio Star was nothing like it ended up with the buggles, actually. So, uh, oh, that's right. Dig that out and listen if you haven't, haven't heard it. Fantastic. So, um, so... Is the book out now? It came out on the 20th of September worldwide. And the reviews have been... We just staggered, Bill. It's just everyone just absolutely loves it. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Well, um, as always, we will put it on our own website bookstore, so we'll put with a direct link to it, so that people can can go there and find it rather than having to trawl through the internet and find it for you. So um, hopefully, we get a few sales. Uh, and I guess I mean this could go on forever until you're so scuppered by everybody knowing that they're just not going to write back to you. Well, it's the bottomless pit, isn't it? I mean, there's so many people you can write to. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, as long as it's fun, we'll keep doing it. I love the way you describe the music business as a bottomless pit. I've felt like that for years, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> and how's your dad, by the way? How is your dad? He's the one who makes all the money and just stays in the background, isn't he? Well, it, it, just like the music business. <laughs> <laughs> very true. You can see, you can very, see the parallels, can't you? Very, very true. Well, it sounds like you're having a lot of fun still doing it, and it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Dave. Uh, it's, and you, Bill. Uh, Dear Mr. Popstar is the book. Uh, look out for it on our website and uh, buy it and get that for somebody's Christmas because anyone who's into music will find this hilarious. Bless you, Bill. Give our love to your dad and talk to, to you again soon. All the best. Take care, Cheers, Bill. Cheers, Bye-bye. Bye. This is Talk Radio Europe. Online at tre.radio.